your hurricane relief fund option closed a while back. That was a success, as I understand. Although uh, we haven't heard specific figures. Well, we've heard that you received 1,200 applications under that uh, option. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit more about how that went? Um, the Hurricane Relief Fund was a success, um, both at the cutoff time at the end of March and subsequent to that because we had given agents an option to bring in an application after the cutoff time as long as they registered the names before the cutoff time. So as a result, um, the, the, num the volume um, was high. That is in excess of 1,200 applications, as the Prime Minister originally said. Um, and the volume has come from uh, a number of regions. I would say 50% um, of our applications continue to come from China, right? And we see that both in the Hurricane Fund and in our real estate option. Um, in, in the Middle East now, uh, you know, I think we represent about 45%. Um, of applicants coming out to, of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, you're, sorry, you're saying 50%, half from China, 45% in the Middle East, so yeah. that only leaves 5% from elsewhere? Yeah, from Russia and some other, you know, okay. like maybe the US, maybe. Right. Uh, but, only, others, but, but so 95% are either Chinese or Middle, Middle East. Middle East, yeah. What you've seen after the Hurricane Fund is the Sustainable Growth Fund. Um, we're now seeing, beginning to see an uptick in that and we'll see a steady flow in that. Um, but our real estate option is really taking off now. Um, because since, since, so um, just to recap, it, it, it's been a few months, but you did split the uh, real estate option in half, let's say. It was 400,000, now it's 200,000 with two uh, applicants co-investing. Yeah. Um, the actual... Um, policy on that was uh, twofold. One, we created a separate category of real estate option at 200,000 for shares in high-end hotels. So the first one was six cents, range development, six cents project. So they got approval under that 200,000 category. Um, to equate the market, in our local market and, and developers who had gotten approval before, what we did was we um, split the 400,000 into two 200,000. So we call it full title, half title. Mm. So you get full title for 400,000, half title meaning two people have to be on the title right. for 200,000. 200, sure. right? And um, obviously our real estate fees were, were adjusted just before we did that. So. Um, our real estate option has become a really uh, viable option um, and almost on par with um, the Sustainable Growth Fund. Mm -hmm. It has invigorated the real estate market mm -hmm. and developers who were um, stagnant yeah. are now back in the market getting sales and um, being motivated to complete their projects. Yeah. Well, recently, we um, cabinet approved a mandate to, um, to ensure that all applicants uh, provide fingerprints. So the concept of biometrics is now coming into play. But it's not just about um, fingerprints, it's about identity verification. One of the benefits of, of that, apart from the extra level of due diligence, is that over the past, I, I think all of the units um, have, have had the complaint of mistaken identity. Right? This eliminates or helps eliminate that mistaken identity because if you get a fingerprint. The other um, effect that I think it has is that if there is a bad guy out there who has been thinking about applying and you say to him, I want your fingerprints and I want identity verification. He may be reluctant to go He ahead. will be reluctant to, to put it in. So just by default, we may be eliminating a certain level of applicant and I think this strengthens our program. The question of gathering biometric data, I, I know that that's been uh, the standard in Malta since the beginning. Uh, Malta has styled itself as sort of the, the gold standard. You say you are the platinum. Pla pla you're mm -hmm. the platinum. They say they're the gold standard when it comes to due diligence anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and they've also said that eventually 
they hope that other CBI programs will adopt the same due diligence measures. Is this a step in that direction? And well, I, I take issue with that because Henley and Partners, in a report um, last year, identifies St. Kitts as, uh, and Nevis as the strongest due diligence company um, entity in the world. All right. So if we are, um, we are ahead of Malta. I have to tell you. Okay. <laughs>